Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What are we talking about today? Well, today, it was originally supposed to be uh, a video talking about the final note that just came up because I did promise someone that I would do something uh, related to team building things. Uh, but I'm currently not caught up on the Christmas event because I've been spending all that time reading all of Lost Belt 6. So instead of that, today I'm going to be talking about the thing that should be coming up after Christmas is over. Which, which you would think would be Tung T Tunguska over here, but that's actually not what's next. What's next is actually the main quest Clear Aid Campaign Part 4, which is likely going to be the thing that shows up first. And then we're going to go into Tunguska. The only thing we don't know is that it's likely this is going to show up right when Christmas ends, because that's how it happened on JP. So I expect this to happen as soon. This should be announced in the next couple days. There might be some banner changes, but I doubt there will be any banner changes to it. Um, so it should show up right at the 15th, and this is basically the last chance you'll get to KE caught up to Lost Belt 6. You have to beat all of Lost Belt 6 if you want to be a part of Tunguska. I'm doing it now because I actually had a lot of downtime, and that would be my best chance to read. And I should be hopefully finished today, which means tomorrow I'll actually legitimately make a video talking about grinding <laughs> this thing, which will be too late by then. But hey, if you've made it that long anyway. So let's talk about this real quick. So the main quest clear campaign uh, is the part four of it. This is your last push. Um, first things first, this is where we're going to get the new item, which is the Stargazer's Teapot. Uh, this is the thing that increases. It's an option to toggle the use of Star. Gazer's Teapot is going to be added to the party menu. The amount of bond points included in bonus and extra ones from the seas or other campaigns, and then one quest consumes one teapot. No teapot will be consumed if the quest provides no bond points. The party only consists of max bond servants, and they'll give us 20. Uh, 20 will be given to the players who clear Avalon Le Fay before December 26th. Um, and these will, the claim duration will go up until January 2nd, and then these will last us up until February 28th. So you want to use them basically almost as soon as you get them. <laughs> well, not as soon as you get them, but pretty close to it. Um, which is nice. I like grinding bond, point, bond points. Uh, I've been doing it slowly over the years. At the thing, at this point, I finally broke 12 with, uh, Jaguar Warrior getting to the final bond point. So this will kind of be nice to have this item come in and... Help a little bit with bond point farming. Just a little bit, though. Not a lot, because there are only 20. Anyway, there will also be limited master missions, which is uh, if you clear arc 1 and arc 2 main quests up to 7 times, that should give you a good old 1, 2, 3, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There will be 12 quartz in total, with the final thing being a uh, Divisionary Flames. And then, of course, main quest, arc 1 and 2 AP campaign, everything will cost 0, which is uh, going to be a decent enough health. Though, to be honest, as I've been reading <laughs> through Lost Belt 6, I've had almost max stamina um, because I'm reading so much near the end of it where it just naturally regains over time. But anyway, that's what's going to be included in the campaign. And then finally, the, th the only reason that people are going to be paying attention to this, besides it signifying, hey, seriously catch up with Lost Belt 6, this is a banner that features Melusane, along with Lancelot, regular, the not regular, I guess Saber, I guess that is regular. Even though to me, Berserker Lancelot is the regular Lancelot. But Saber Lancelot and Percival. And those are going to be the units on it. Millisane will be an all-time rate up. This is the the only thing that sucks is that because the pity, um, the banner will not be structured this way. You won't get days where they'll be separate featured. It will just be all uh, Melusane, Percival, and Lancelot. And the reason is is that this banner was one of the the few last ones we got before pity was introduced, and it completely changed the way banners were stru structured. Where we don't get solo rate ups on four stars anymore. Uh, kind of sucks, unless the banner itself is just a single four star and a single five star. But anyway, I digress. Uh, yeah, there's this banner. So just to go quickly over some of them, I'll go over the four stars very quickly. Um, Percival's a very good AoE Lancer boy. The only thing that uh, comes in between him is the fact that I think... There's already another Arts Lancer that exists, but that doesn't stop him from being good. The other Arts Lancer is Summer Melt, so there's a good chance that 
a lot of people will have Summer Melt build up and they'll basically be competing and I think Summer Melt is better. But if you like Percival, which I actually do, I've been using him on and off and I use him a little bit more than Melt actually. Because uh, I like Percival a whole bunch. And he works out perfectly fine for you. I think you might run into the an issue of damage, but it might also be just because my Percival is not fully leveled up in his skills. And he's still able to farm as far as I know. I forget if I... Yeah, no, he is, because Castoria is very stupid with the way <laughs> things go down. And then we have Lancelot Saber, who uh, is a single target arts unit, who also, similar to Percival, has the main issue being that the other single target Saber that I can think of for arts is Bright Nero. And obviously she's insanely good for a lot of different reasons, not only giving, um, doing a buttload of damage, also giving support. But that being said, uh, he's also still a very good solid single target arts unit, to be honest. I still, I used him in Lost Belt 6 to fight bosses that were, I knew for a fact were just going to be Lancer. Because he's just kind of solid at what he does. The only thing he doesn't have is maybe he doesn't have enough survivability. But if you're specifically only fighting a Lancer, it does help a whole bunch. And he's able to get his Noble Phantasm up and running pretty easy. And those are just a quick overview of the two four stars. Now, here's the whole reason anyone would even be summoning in a fur. I've already seen people comment saying, hey, I'm waiting for this unit. <laughs> this is the unit I care about for this year. And that's including, I guess, the New Year's unit that is coming up, which is Kunskaya of Darkness. It's Melusane. So let's go over her real quick. It is a Lancer. She is one quick, two arts, two buster. Her first skill is the Dragon Heart B. Increases zone attack for three turns. Reduces zone damage taken by 500 for three turns. Increases zone max HP for three turns. And then charges her own MP gauge. The MP gauge increases 30%. The HP increases uh, 2,000. And the attack up is 40%, and the cooldown is of 6. Her second skill is the Parry Dancer B. Increases zone critical star absorption for 3 turns. Gains critical stars every turn for 3 turns, and then gains more crit stars. The absorption is 5,000. The star regen is 10, and the stars you get is 10, and this is on a cooldown of 5. Uh, did I mention the first skill cooldown? The first skill cooldown is of 5. Oh, uh, 6. And third skill... <laughs> okay... Uh, Ray Horizon A, 500% chance to transform self into stage 3, charges on MP gauge, and then grants self invincibility for one turn. At level 10, this is a 100% MP charger, and this is on a cooldown of 5. But it doesn't matter because it changes into this skill, which still has a cooldown of 5, but it, you know. It's the Ray Horizon A. It only increases uh, MP damage for 3 turns, and then grants self invincibility for a single turn. The damage up is 30%. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance B and Territory Creation B+. Her third append skill is an Anti-Lancer Attack Damage Aptitude, because trust no one, not even yourself. And her Noble Phantasm, which this is important, because there's two of them, um, is the Innocent Ara Knight. No, not now. Innocent Light of the Lake it is a rank A Noble Phantasm. It is anti-unit. It hits five times. It is Arts. It deals damage to a single enemy, increases their damage taken by 1,000 for 5 turns, that's a demerit, and then gain 10 crit stars. The damage is 900% at level 1. Its damage is uh, 15,000, 1,500 at level 5 if you get her there. And then she also increases her own NP generation rate for 3 turns. This activates first, so that means you'll be getting the benefit of it first, which is really nice. At charge level 1, it's 20%, and at the final charge level, it is 40%. And finally, after you use her third skill... After you use it, you get this uh, you get this noble phantasm, which is the Hollow Heart Albion. No by no known by no one, the innocent heartbeat, which is a rank EX noble phantasm, it is anti-world, it hits five times, it is now a buster NP, and it grants self ignore invincibility for one turn, it deals damage to all enemies, and it inflicts burn for one thousand damage for five turns to them. Uh, NP level one, the damage is three hundred percent. Uh three hundred percent. Yeah, it's three hundred. Uh, and then at level 5, it's 500%. And then the overcharge effect is an increase to own Buster damage, uh, Buster performance for 3 turns, and this activates first. So the Buster increase is 20%, and the charge level at the final level is 60%, if you can get it there. And that is Melusane, and she's one hell of a unit. She is maybe, inarguably, the best Lancer in the game. I think at least on Fugo and A, for she definitely is. Um... She's crazy powerful. 
even when even if you uh i know it seems weird because it's a unit that technically speaking like goes between one mode and the other but this ability is just so kind of insane and even when you briefly use her in lost belt six you can kind of feel even with the fact that she's getting buffed you can kind of feel how crazy strong that ability is the they don't give a lot of units a hundred percent np increase for a reason the reason is is that it's a very stupid ability to give to someone um and this is this ends up being she ends up being a unit that is mm, what is the best way of me to say it like there's just so many specific earth obviously you can just ignore one or the other you can just ignore the skill completely uh, and just focus on the fact that she's a single target and she's an arts unit and there you go You can build for arts do this do that if you get into a situation where things are looking bad and you have no choice It's either Melusane dies or anything else. You can literally just use this ability grant her of invincibility And she'll just shoot off an NP even if it's an AOE one. It's still doing damage It's still useful in some way even if you look at from the case of someone who only wants to use her um, single target uh, noble phantasm the single target noble phantasm itself increases NP generation rate, which is kind of insane. And you can also look here. She has two arts cards and two buster cards. So she can actually perfectly work with either one of them. Um, depending on which mode she's kind of in, they've thought this through. It's not like they did. <laughs> they gave her one arts or one buster and decided to go double quick. No, they, they cared a lot about designing this unit when they made her kit. Um, but the MP generation rate should, uh, help a whole bunch being able to just quickly get this to 100% and not even having to worry about, like, th literally this ability here, charges on MP gauge, you would, in theory, never actually use this <laughs> if you were, uh, arts. The reason is, is that she's going to be getting so much MP generation rate, it's going to be in some very niche situations where you would actually end up not hitting it. Like, I can't imagine too many scenarios where after you double buff her with Castoria or with Castoria and Atomomo, she doesn't get the Noble Phantasm right afterwards. It seems like she would be able to get it pretty easily. I guess if you're in a situation where, um, I don't know, you went double arts or you went like arts and but two busters and you weren't able to get it. I don't know. It's very, it's, it seems like a very niche scenario. It shouldn't happen a whole bunch is what I'm trying to say. Even if you went arts, quick arts, you should still in theory be able to get it back because you get MP generation rate from quick. You would have to get double arts. You'd have to get use your noble phantasm and then get double buster and then just not get, not kill with your noble phantasm so you still have stuff left over and then not have anything on your castorias to give to her. Like that's a specific scenario that I'm imagining in my head. And then I guess it also matters in craft essence and stuff like that. But either way, still a fantastic single target unit terms of aoe this is a kind of a no-brainer just being able to give yourself a, an immediate 100 percent and then just be like fire off your <laughs> your buster np very nice very good and she still has an, a charge into own mp gauge i forgot to mention that's right <laughs> she also has this so never mind even if she doesn't make it to the full 100 percent, she still has this ability which gives, which gives 30 percent np which is perfectly respectable um it's 100% a case of just like, they don't build a lot of units like this. And the reason is, is that it's too all in one good. Like there's so many scenarios where like you're fighting in specific nodes and we've been getting more nodes like this too, where the first thing you fight is actually a single target thing or two targets. And then at that point you can just still use Melusane, take them out with your Noble Phantasm on the first one. And then hit the other one and then the second um the second wave has the aoe then you switch to your aoe mode literally not having to use a single one of your um your skills to deplete it at all and then you just get to keep it and man there's just so many ways i can imagine just using melusane where she's like useful she's an insane unit definitely 100 percent worth going for i had to skip her originally because too many good units were being released at the time that she released and I just did not have the same quartz to spare for her, but definitely for this coming up and looking at the units that are coming forward, I think I am going to be summoning for Melusane. See if I can get her, uh, mainly because it, I feel like I have everyone from Lost Belt 6 for up but Melusane, so at this point, I may as well go for the last of them. And yeah, I, I again, even though I've tried to give as much 
scenarios I can imagine in my head where Melusine is good, I still feel like I'm not doing enough to just bring home how good Melusine is. I don't think I've even seen a single negative thing ever said about Melusine. <laughs> that is uh, the kind of unit that we've got here going on. I have to say that I'm pretty sure there are people. There probably is some people out there who are just like, no, I think this is awkward and I don't want to use it. But after using her, I can understand it looking on paper, but when you actually use her, it just doesn't feel that way. It just feels like you're just using an, ins an insanely strong unit. But I think that's enough of me just saying how good Melusane is. Uh, should you summon on this? Again, it does kind of depend on what you care about most. Like, if you care more about... Uh, Tundeska coming up, which features, which I actually do really want, uh, Dobrynya, uh, or, or you care more about Taigong, even if they're both not as strong as Melusane, or different, use, have different use cases from Melusane, if you care more about one of these two units, then, you know, summon for the characters that you actually like. If you're someone who's been non-stop saving for Koi and Sky of Darkness, then... I would suggest continue doing that. You should stay, uh, if you have a plan going in, you should stick to that plan. But if you're someone who's going, I'm kind of leaning into, depending on a lot of these characters, the only unit that I would say, actually, here's the one unit I'll say that if you're summoning, if you're saving for this one, you should wait and wait a little bit more, is that in early January, actual Koyan Skaya of Light, which is the Buster support is coming as well. If you do not have Koyan Sky of Light and you're someone who uses Buster Heavy, this is the one unit I would say maybe s go easy on Melusane. Do a couple summons, do maybe a multi. But if your main focus is you want to increase your Buster team and your Buster supports, then I would say, yo, wait you wait for Koyan Sky sometime in January 10th or whenever NA would get them. That's the only unit, though, from the ones that, I can, that I've seen. Other The other ones, it, all, it 100% percent is up to user preference and depending on your box and what you care about but in terms of the heavy hitters it is melusane and it's coin sky of light and then the rest of them it always depends on the person how much they badly want them like for me with uh Nabrinic over here which i would definitely even looking at it now i'm remembering oh man i really hope melusane doesn't drain all my quartz but anyway that's the end of the video everyone again this thing should show up sometime in the 15th I'm going to go back to doing Lost Belt Story. I also have to go back to work. <laughs> I have to do some work stuff because it finally came in and I have to finish that. And then hopefully tomorrow I can release a video and show off some easy grinding stuff that you can use. Uh, we'll see though. If it doesn't happen, it's because work interfered and stopped me. But otherwise, that is the plan. Thank you very much for watching this video though. As always, you can leave a like. It helps out the channel a whole bunch. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. You guys have a good day. And good luck to you if you are either lotto grinding or you are reading like I am. Best of luck. Until next time. Peace out.